Rub up your engines! Oh, bad McCallop said, how can I stop being mad as hell about things? Well, here's the thing. Realize, okay, we're here on the planet Earth for a finite time. We're all going to conk out at some point in time, right? Take that into perspective. Anytime you get mad, you're like, oh, well, I'll be dead in a while. It won't matter at all. <laughs> Now, there's certain things in life that you need to do, and you got to make sure it's done right, you know, raise your kids right, stuff like that, but get laughter. Laughter is what saves us all. We're either going to laugh in modern society, or we're going to go insane. <laughs> and me, I would rather laugh than go insane. Now, there's so many things you can't control. The stuff you can't control, like how you feel about things, your job, what you do, you know? Right side of life. Don't look at the negative side of life. There's so many negative things, you'll go insane thinking about all the negative things. Think about the good things. Maybe read some Zen Buddhist books, you know? <laughs> read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert Persick. It's a great book, give you a really good perspective, and maybe you'll turn into riding motorcycles, and you won't be mad as hell all the time. You when I was young and I was mad, I'd get on my BSA 650 Lightning. Prove I go roaring down the road and I felt a lot better. Tom Wanamaker says, Scotty, do you think the Cybertruck will pass a federal crash test or is it too rigid? Well, it has to if they're going to sell it in the United States. So any four-wheeled vehicle that's legal on a road has to pass crash tests. So who knows? I mean, crumple zone. I'm sure they could design it so the crumple zones work. They got enough engineers. Somebody ought to figure out how to do it, right? If it doesn't, they won't be able to sell it to the public. So who knows? Maybe it isn't. And that's why they they're not selling it to the public yet. And they got to tweak it some more. Who the hell knows? <laughs> I don't know, but I would assume at some point in time they would get it so that it would pass crash tests because it's changed a lot from its original configuration. It's more squarish and stuff. So I'd assume it probably would. Max Metri says, Scotty, in your opinion, is the best truck model in the market Toyota Tacoma? They're excellent, but would going with a cheaper Chevy Colorado be good? Only if you want to waste your money, you don't want a truck for all that much time. And depending on what kind of a truck you want. I'll give you a perfect example. At a customer in Tennessee, right? He looked at a brand new Toyota Tacoma TRD, and when he saw the price, he said, that's too much. So he went and bought a used Chevy Colorado that was loaded. Now, he wasn't talking about the cheap Tacoma. He was talking about the loaded Tacoma. So he got a loaded Colorado. He liked all the crap that was on it, and he got a used one, so he saved a ton of money over the Toyota Tacoma. Of course, it will never last as long as the Tacoma will. If you're the type of guy that drives a vehicle so many years and gets rid of it, hey, maybe that's okay. You'll save money, right? But if you're like me and my son, he's got two Tacomas, right? One's four-cylinder, one's a six for towing boats and stuff. He loves them. It'll keep them forever. So, do you want something to last forever, or do you want a little bit cheaper thing that won't last as long, but you're going to be trading it in anyway? On a ride, 777 says, my airbox in my Chevy S1096 is getting clogged with oil. The PC valve is new. What can go wrong? The airbox is clogged with oil because your engine's flat wearing out. It's getting what's called blow-by. When your pistons go up and down, they're supposed to be sealed. Compression ring on the top, then there's a wash oil wash ring on the bottom, then there's an oil control ring on the very bottom. There's three rings. As those wear out, instead of the oil being sealed inside the engine, it gets into the top of the piston, and when the spark plug fires, it burns, but it doesn't completely burn, and it starts throwing pressure everywhere, including into the crankcase. When the rings don't seal, all that pressure blows down. Then it blows through the crankcase, through the system, into your airbox. And whether your PCV valve is working or not, when it's totally worn out, it's overwhelming that system and you get a bunch of oil going in. Your engine is just flat wearing out. I mean, what the heck? It's a 96. How long do you think this thing's going to last? As long as it runs, keep adding oil and live with it. Adam says, hi. When I change my transmission oil, should I change the filter, perform a partial oil change, or do it for a complete flush? One, never flush. It can destroy things. Now, I mean, if you've got a transmission that doesn't even move, and you want to try, try flushing it. What the heck? It doesn't work anyway, right? But otherwise, don't ever flush it. What you really want to do, drop the pan, clean it, change the fluid, and change the filter if it's accessible. Some modern cars, the filter's way inside. You got to strip the whole transmission apart, pull it off, take you 10, 12 hours, forget it. But if it has a filter you can access, change the filter to clean the pan, put it back on, and use the same exact original fluid it came. Do not mix brands. You never know what's in each brand. Don't mix them. D.L.O. Berg says, Scotty, is a 1957 International A100 with 109,000 miles worth repairing. Look at the frame 
frame and the body. If the frame's rusted, don't waste a penny. It's worth nothing. If the frame's all rotted away. But if it's got a solid frame, how far do you want to go? Do you want to make it look beautiful, put a bunch of money in it that you'll probably never see back, but you'd have a cool old truck? That's all your choice, you know? I mean, it's a 1957 International A100. It's not like it's going to be worth a million dollars. You don't want to put too much money in it, but let's say it's not rotted. All the paint's faded and all that crap. Hey, turn into a rat truck. Have some fun with it. What the heck? 109,000 miles is not that much mileage. Hayden says, what's the best way to repair a spark plug thread? It depends how badly it's done. Threads in the bottom are still okay. They actually make these cool tools. You can fit them inside, you turn a wrench and they expand, and then they re-thread it from the inside back up to the top. So if the top's screwed up, that will re-thread it and it'll work fine. But if it's strooped the whole way through, then what generally the best is the Healy coil. You can get a Healy coil kit to come with directions and tools, and you'll learn how to screw them in. You might have to do a little bit of drilling and then get a vacuum and suck all the little pieces out. It's, it's a lot more involved than it is just trying to re-thread it from the inside out with one of these special tools. But the Healy coils will work if you do them correct. They come with directions. There's a million videos out there on YouTube you can watch of putting Healy coils in. Rainbow Rashka says, I need help. What's the best place in Texas to get severe collision repair fixed that won't rob me blind? 2020 Toyota Camry LE. Well, here's the problem. It's a 2020. It's a very modern car. Everything's run by computers. Once they're in a severe wreck, all bets are off. Sometimes it's not worth fixing a car. Now, you say that won't rob me blind. If you're telling me you didn't have collision on that car, being a 2020, you're paying out of your pocket, you're just asking for trouble there. Normally, your insurance company is going to pay for it, so you don't have to do anything about it, so what do you care? You just want it fixed right. You don't care what it costs because the insurance company's paying for it. If you're paying it out of pocket and your insurance company doesn't pay for it because you didn't have collision and it was your fault, ask all your friends. Maybe they know some collision guys that work off the books on the weekends. They got their own garage and they'll work on your car. You could save money that way. I used to know a lot of guys in Houston that did stuff like that. I don't know anybody anymore, but that'd be the route you would want to go. Mike Donahoe says, how do you feel about the Mazda Sky to 2.5 turbo if it's not driven hard, mostly highway miles? Okay, Mazda makes pretty good stuff, and at least it's a 2.5 engine. It's not some dinky 1 liter or 1.5 liter. It's a reasonable size engine. Personally, I would buy a 2.5 non-turbo. I had a customer just do that. They had a choice, turbo, non-turbo. They got the non-turbo, and they're happy with it. The turbos are faster. They're just going to wear out faster. Now, if you don't beat it, can you control your foot? Most people can't with turbos because the turbo charge does what? It beefs up pressure. So when you want to go fast, you hit it and then woo, and you like going boom, but it's also wearing your engine out faster. Now, you never know. Maybe it could last quite some time, but either the engine or the turbo is going to wear out before a regular engine because turbos spin over 100,000 RPMs. They just flat wear out over time. Make sure if you got one, though, change your engine oil and filter at least every 5,000 miles with full synthetic GF6 oil, the new oil that's made for turbos. Marcel says, can I disable my 2000 Celica's computer from throwing the missions code? My cat's bad, but I live in Arizona, so they don't care. I get annoyed seeing the engine light all the time. No, you can't. Can't disable it from doing that, but you can do the next best thing. I got a video on taking a dash apart in Toyota. It's pretty simple. You can take the dash out and then you get to where that check engine light is and get yourself a little ice pick and break the bulb or if it has an LED in it, break the LED and then the light won't come on anymore and it won't bother you. You live in Arizona, they don't do emissions testing. Go ahead and go that route. I mean, you can put a piece of tape over it. It's easier on the outside, but then you got an ugly little piece of black tape. You can just take that dash out pretty easy and either pop the LED or the bulb and then it won't come mine anymore. Since they don't do emissions testing, what do you care? It's a 2000. If you want to know what shape your car is in, you can still plug your OBD scanner into the OBD plug. You'll still get information. It's a 2000. It just won't have the check engine light on anymore if you break that bulb or the LED. Jack White says, Scotty, what engine's better? 4.7 liter in a Toyota Tundra or the 5.3 in a Chevy Silverado? <laughs> Toyota engine in a Tundra is tons better than a G I've seen those things with 500,000 miles. They still run like new. The GM stuff. GM made great cars decades ago. Not anymore. Their quality control is garbage. Oh, let's put less head bolts on because it's cheaper to make them that way. Yeah, but then head gaskets will blow faster. We don't care. They're out of warranty when they blow, so what do they care, right? Toyota makes such a better engine. Makes your head spin. Ten times better than what GM's putting out. Sure and funny, man, says Scotty. What lawnmower brand would you recommend? Well, I got a John Deere here and it hasn't given me any problems at all. 27 and a half horsepower. Ride it around. It's been great. It doesn't break. The only thing I ever got was a flat tire and it wasn't the vehicle's fault. We have these 
gigantic ornamental thorn trees that have thorns that are like this big. And I didn't know I ran over a thorn and poked a hole in one of the tires. But luckily, they're tubeless tires, so I just got a tire plug like I use for cars, and I plugged it last year, and it still kept all the air, didn't leak out. So I got to say, John Deere makes pretty good lawnmowers. Huh? If you're talking about a Porsche lawnmower, we used to have those old lawn boys. I don't know if they're any good anymore. They were back in the day. I don't know if they are now. I, like I said, I haven't had a problem with my John Deere riding one. It's fine. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.